Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another trophy list preview video. Today we're going to be going over a game that uh, quite frankly came out of left field. This has been happening to me a lot lately uh, where a game, a random indie game just drops and I'm like holy shit this game looks amazing uh, and it just kind of stealth releases. I had no idea that it was even in development or that it was coming out until it comes out. And that being said, you know, I would have liked to have, uh, normally I like to make these videos, uh, further ahead of time, uh, cause usually trophy lists drop a couple weeks before the game comes out, but with indie games, it's hard to gauge that because they just fucking come out. They're not like AAA games where, like, you know the release date well ahead of time. So, uh, I couldn't properly plan for this video, and it's coming out a little bit later than I would have liked it to. But, uh, this game just dropped, it looks hella fucking cool, and I want to look at the trophy list for it, so here goes. Did I even mention what this, the game I was looking at was called? This is Sifu. <laughs> I don't think I actually said the name of the game, I'm a fucking idiot. But anyways, uh, yeah, Sifu, this is a game that just dropped, uh, came out just, uh, or maybe a week ago now, or a few days ago? Can't remember the exact release date, but, uh, came out very recently, and, uh, I wanted to go over the trophy list with you guys and uh, see what's up because this is a game I am definitely interested in. In fact, funny story, I watched all of like two minutes, not even joking, maybe even less. I've watched like two minutes of gameplay of this game from the very beginning, like from the word go. And the second I saw what the game was about and how it like functions and shit, I'm like, oh, this game looks so fucking cool. Like, this game just looks awesome. It's got, like, a... It looks like one of those games that, like, is a really nice challenge for people who are hungry for that sort of thing. But also, it has, like, a, a high skill cap, so uh, players who are actually good at the game uh, differentiate quite a bit from, you know, the casual players. And you could totally see the difference in terms of gameplay. And I really like games like that. Uh, a lot of games like that are usually pretty difficult, and I'm assuming this one is too, but, uh, I'm not one to shy away from a challenge, so, and this game looks fucking awesome, so I am totally down and excited to get into this game at some point. Alright, so let's go over the trophies. Now, uh, the thing about the trophy list is that, uh, a lot of the trophies in the list, I've already taken a look at it ahead of time, but, uh, a lot of the trophies on this list you wouldn't really understand what the hell they mean or what they're even asking of you unless you somewhat understand the game. So I did do a little bit of digging even though I haven't really seen all that much gameplay of the game. Like I said, uh, all I really know about the game is what I've read. So, uh, and like I said, I just wanted to do the bare minimum so that I can actually analyze these trophies and understand what I'm talking about. So we have your typical uh, story-based trophies, you know, stuff like uh, uh, defeating the bosses. Apparently this game only has like five levels, and they're all like 25 minutes long, uh, which is bizarre for a game of this uh, asking price. This game, at least in Canada in it anyway, is um, anywhere between uh, 50 to 70 bucks, depending on which version of the game you buy. But, uh, yeah, this game is pretty pricey for a game with, uh, this amount of content, so I don't really like that. I might end up waiting for this game to drop in price before I actually pick it up, depending on the, uh, amount of demand my viewer base has for this game. But yeah, so we got your typical blah blah blah, kill people, yeah, 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 beat the game, um... Getting the talismans. Now, apparently the talisman... See, this is what I'm talking about. You would have no idea what the fuck this even means. Is it a collectible? Uh, you know, what is it? But, um, you have to get them. Basically, there's two ways you can play the game. You can either, uh, play the game and kill everybody. Uh, so you could kind of go, like, an evil route. Or you can spare every boss and let them live. Uh, and you get the talismans for doing that. So... It kind of reminds me of Bioshock 1, where in that game, you would have the choice to either uh, kill the little sisters or spare them, but it was always better to spare them in every scenario. Like, killing them would only be worse off for you, and there was just no reason to do it. It was always better to spare them. 
And that seems to be the case in this game, at least from my uh, basic understanding of it. Unless there's something I'm missing or I didn't read up on. Now, I want to talk about these two trophies because they are the most interesting ones on the list, but let me go over all the basic trophies first. I'll come back to these ones because, uh, yeah, those are probably going to take up the brunt of the conversation. Beat any boss without dying, uh, you know, uh, trophies like this are to be expected in a game like this. Like I said, it's a challenging high skill cap level game, kind of like Sekiro. It's probably not as hard as Sekiro, but, or, or maybe it's along the same lines, who knows, but basically... The amount of work and effort you put into the game really shows, and you really reap the fruits of your labor. Uh, if you're stupidly good at the game, then you'll be able to accomplish things like these, uh, trophies like this, without issue. And it's almost, like, expected of you in games like this, so... Uh, which I think is really cool. I don't know if I'll buy the game and just fucking suck at it, but... Trophies like this are totally to be expected. So that's pretty cool that they have stuff like this, like it, it totally leaves room for like replay value, which is something, if you know me, that I value very greatly uh, in any video game. So that's pretty cool. There's a lot to explore here and a lot of time worth being spent, even though there's only like five levels in the game. There's a lot of reason to replay them over and over. I, I never really know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's a good thing if the levels are vast with content, it's a bad thing if it feels too repetitive. So I guess we'll have to see. So these are interesting, although not very surprising for a game like this. Climbing and growing across environment allows you to control the flow of the fight. Uh, throwing enemies around makes handling big groups easier. Uh, anything can be a weapon. So these are basically uh, asking you to defeat enemies in certain ways, which again is not surprising at all in a game like this. So uh, this is pretty typical to be expected. These are for earning the highest uh, uh, score-based or depending on the cat category, there's several different categories uh, to buy the most expensive things in each category. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Barehanded or with a weapon, standing up against a wall, a ledge, or on the ground, perform each takedown type at least once. This sounds like a fun trophy to get. So uh, I know there's like finishers in the game, uh, and I'm assuming each finisher will be like very unique or look very different depending on uh, each one of these scenarios, like without a weapon, with a weapon, whether you're standing up or, or you're low to the ground, if you're against some sort of terrain or obstacle, uh, the finisher will always be different with a different animation. That's pretty fucking cool. Uh, I'm a big fan of games that have like very visual and dynamic uh, moves that look fucking awesome, and they just give you such pleasure to perform and they're just so satisfying when you do uh games like that are so much fun so that bodes very well for a game like this uh especially because again that also adds to the replay value believe it or not in its own small way that's why games like for example uh middle earth shadow of war games like that are so fun to play because the combat just never really gets stale it's always exciting to perform those finishers because they just look cool as hell. You could do them a hundred times and never get tired of them. Use each focus attack at least once. Uh, I don't know what those are. I assume they're uh, different types of moves that you can learn or buy. Get different scores. Uh, reach your oldest appearance. So I guess I'll talk a little bit about this. Uh, basically the game, the way the game punishes you for dying is uh, you, you get older in age. So you're on like a sort of like infinite life loop. But there's a punishment, like, even though you keep dying over and over, your punishment is that you get older, so you come back and you can retry, but you're at an older age. And from what I understood about the game, uh, the older you are, the smaller your max health bar is. So when you're, when you're at full health when you're young, would be much bigger than when you're at full health when you're old. But, apparently there's a trade-off. I also read that the older you get, the stronger you get. So, you're trading your maximum health for a little bit of attack power. So, at least you're getting something out of growing old. It's not a complete uh, detriment to you. But yeah, that's essentially the way the game works. Successfully use a blade's one-shot weapon attack. Uh, perform three takedowns within 12 seconds. Hit three enemies with a single strike. Uh, yeah, these are all pretty uh, typical bog standard um, ways of killing enemy trophies. 
that are very common in games like these, uh, like I've been saying. But, I mean, they sound fun to do. They don't seem like they'd be too difficult. Oh, this is cool. So, in the squats, which is the first level, I believe, clear the hangar in less than 1 minute and 20 seconds after being detected by the main group. And then they got in the club's pit, beat the juggernaut before any of the other enemies are beaten. Oh, so there's, like, unique trophies in each level for, like, accomplishing a specific uh, task within that's unique to each level. That's so cool. In the museum, throw an enemy into the fountain from a higher floor. These sound like fun, too. Very exciting. In the tower cage, drop from a high point to get deeper faster. In the sanctuary, throw an enemy into the mountains. <laughs> that sounds awesome. And then there's a photo mode. This is fairly common in most games. All right, so we went over all the basic trophies. Uh, they all sound pretty interesting and exciting. But the main trophies to talk about are these two, Scareless and Prodigal Child. So uh, they both go hand in hand. They're basically asking the same thing of you. And if you get the harder one, you get both of them. But there's uh, a trophy to beat the game while being 25 years old or less. So... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe you start the game at either 20 or 25. Uh, I can't remember exactly what age you are. No, I think actually you start at 20 if memory serves. So you start the game at 20 years old, and every time you die, you grow in age, but it actually works in a, uh, in a set interval kind of way. So when you die once, you, uh, you age from 20 to 21. When you die twice, you gain the age the number of times you die. So, because you've died twice, you don't go from 21 to 22, you go from 21 to 23. Then when you die three times, you go from 23 to 26. Then when you die four times, you go from 26 to 30. So you see how that works. Uh, the math adds up. But, yeah, it's, it's a pretty interesting way of doing this, but this means this trophy is like stupidly challenging and this is definitely the hardest trophy to get in this game without a doubt and i see it also has the uh rarest earn rate so uh to no surprise either but yeah so it's basically going to be a matter of you want to get stupidly good at this game and be able to perfect levels without really dying or making very minor mistakes now from what i've read there are ways to decrease your age um I think there's a couple ways, but I read that you can, um, you can, like, spend a certain amount of the game's currency or XP in the shop or something to lower your age, but you can only do it so many times per run. So there's ways to, like, mitigate, uh, your human error if you fucked up a lot. So that's pretty cool. It's not, uh, completely unforgiving, so that's good. Because it would suck if this trophy was just a huge kick in the dick and didn't offer you any sort of aid in order to help make this a little bit easier. Because let's be honest, this is a big ask. Like, this means without aid, like without the in-game ways to decrease your age, you're literally only allowed to die twice in a playthrough to get this trophy. If you die three times, you voided it. So, that's pretty crazy. Although I imagine, uh, depending on how this game works, a trophy like this could probably be made much easier by uh, backing up your save files. You could probably keep redoing levels until you're happy with your performance and you've done it perfectly, and then you back up that save to the cloud and then uh, reboot it up if you end up fucking up into a future level. Uh, that way you have a way to go back without, like, screwing up your, your progress permanently. So, that's pretty cool. Um, this trophy sounds really exciting, and when I read it, I'm like, I wonder if I could do that. I wonder if I can accomplish it. I don't know. I really can't tell how difficult this game is by looking at it. This is a game that I would really need to get my hands on and play and feel firsthand just how difficult it is in order to gauge just how challenging this trophy would be. But this game's trophy list looks fucking cool. I don't know if I'll be cursing this game's name when I end up finally getting it and playing it. Uh, maybe I'll fucking hate the trophy and I'll rage my ass off. Who fucking knows? Uh, you know, I've been known to do that. But this game looks cool as hell. I'm very interested in it. But again, I think the asking price for this game on release is a bit much. 
uh, at least for me anyway, I might end up waiting for this game to drop in price a little before I end up picking it up. Or maybe I won't. Maybe uh, my uh, urge to play it will supersede my patience, and maybe I'll just end up getting it because I am really excited about it. Who knows? But anyways, guys, that was a uh, uh, in-depth analysis and preview of the game's trophy list, to the best of my ability, coming from a guy who hasn't actually played the game. But uh, I thought it would be fun to go over the trophies and see what it looks like, what we're getting into. Again, with my limited knowledge, but, you know, that's just kind of how these videos have to be. But I truly hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course hit that notification bell to support me. I really appreciate it, and keep up to date with me for more videos just like this one, more trophy previews, more trophy-related content in general. And hey, don't forget, I live stream, or I try to, as often as I can, whenever I can, and it's one of my favorite things to do, so stop by if you're interested in hanging out and chilling with the guys, or don't. But anyways, have a good one, everybody. Take it easy, and I will definitely see you in the next one.